Good afternoon, everyone. I, Komal Agarwal, along with our Purva Pokarna, White Flow Chairperson, and our White Flow Committee, welcome our guests for today, Ms. Lucia and Mr. Giampaolo, Ms. Nonetai, Flow, White Flow Past Chairs, Flow Committee, Chapter Chairs, and members to this unique program. Before we start, I would request all of you to kindly switch on your cameras for a better interactive session. As per Indian traditions, we light the lamp to bow down to knowledge as the greatest of all forms of wealth. On that note, can we have the lighting of the lamp, please? In honor of our esteemed guests, we are contributing to Flow Initiative of Social Outreach Projects with support organizations like Sail India, Tata Strive, and many others. Can we now have the felicitation slides, please? I now invite Apurva, our Vaiflo chairperson, to address the meeting and introduce our guests and the moderator. Good afternoon, one and all. As we come to the end of our year, we must note how precious and momentous this year has been for all of us out there. The theme for my year was Burn to Brighton, where we pay homage to not only those who have achieved, but also to the ones that struggled. Amidst COVID, our country was in dire need of optimism and every house needs to reignite that spark. The women are the phoenix that reemerged stronger than ever to yet again battle time, adversity, war of expectations and changing reality. It's for this very reason we brought you all to an online platform from which they can understand that empowerment is not purely a physical concept. It goes beyond the laws of space and time. As the vaccination drive continues, we wish to gift our sisters, mothers, colleagues, members for a job well done, a personalized event with the biggest jewelry brand in the world. Let's add some sparkle to it through, the valuable, through this valuable event. Every woman dreams of finery and jewelry. Hence, we bought the dream house of jewelry to you. YFLOW Hyderabad welcomes Bulgari and its ambassadors on a national level and hope to captivate this brilliant audience with their unique designs and coveted collection. We would like to welcome Ms. Lucia Silvestri, Bulgari's Jewelry Creator Director since June 2013. Lucia was just 18 years old when she began her career in Bulgari's Gemological Department. She was instantly enamored by the world of precious stone. So she chose to dedicate all her passion and enthusiasm to gemstones. The Bulgari brothers quickly intuited Lucia's great potential, a talent to be nurtured, and decided to teach her the trade. At 20 years only, she began traveling the world. Meeting with the world's first consolidated her autonomy to become the director of gem acquisitions and finally, Bulgari's jewelry creative director. We also extend our appreciation and gratitude to Juan Paolo Della Croce. As High Jewelry Senior Director, Juan Paolo manages the creation, distribution, and sales of the iconic Bulgari one of a kind jewels and lady jewel watches. His classical studies in Rome shaped his sensibility to beauty and art. Passionate about his work, he conveys the intimate soul of each high jewelry creation he cares as through his ardent words, pieces become alive. Vibrating with colors and light, fulfilling their vocation to adorn women in a unique and distinctive Bulgari way. Promptly understanding the needs of the clients, even the unexpressed ones, thus matching each jewel with the right woman is but one of the talents he distilled along his brilliant career path. 
After a diploma as gemological analyst at Instituto Gemologico Italiano and a master on synthetic gems at Gemological Institute of America, he started his career in Bulgari 26 years ago at Jewelry Quality Control Department and soon switched to the new products development and special order unit. In the meantime, he has also developed a deep knowledge of the world of jewels at 360 degrees. So he was then appointed trainer for the history of the jewelry, jewels and selling techniques to the Bulgari sales force. Two years later, he took over as a and after sales service, senior manager before landing to his natural destination as senior director of the high jewelry department in 2004. I would like to now extend a very cordial welcome to our esteemed moderator for today. Nonita Kaldra has three decades of media experience in print and television. From 2016 till 2020, she was the editor of Harper's Bazaar India. Prior to that, she was the editor in chief of L India, where she spent nearly 13 years at the helm. She has been an influencer in fashion, beauty, and lifestyle. Her ideas and her initiatives have shaped careers and launched trends. Nonita's consultancies have included a special beauty project with Godreach Consumer Products Limited, working on building a new brand. In 2015, she consulted with the Fashion Design Council of India for two fashion weeks. Nanita has also written columns for the Indian Express, the Economic Times, the Daily O website, and Forbes Life magazine. Her work has also appeared in Man's World, Woe, and Grazia as well. I now yield the screen to these extremely talented guests and wish the session be a learning and brilliant experience for all. Thank you, everybody, for that incredibly generous welcome. Um, there is no hospitality like Indian hospitality. And it's incredible that you can feel it through a virtual space as well, this virtual living room that we have all set up. Thank you very much for joining us and being on time. Um, I've had the privilege of being at a high jewelry exhibition in Venice in 2017. Um, where I had a chance to see Bulgari high jewelry up close. While it draws its inspiration from the luxury and history of Rome, and so it's layered and storied and historical, um, what makes Bulgari unique is that it, it's playful. It's, there are statement pieces and colors and gems that you can never imagine. I'm, one of my favorite pieces is the little trombone, the little trumpet, because it sounds like magic and it, it, it tells you the story of the brand. It's a tiny piece. It's one of their oldest, most historic. But I think that at a time like this, when we're looking for hope and optimism, and you talked about it, Apurva, so eloquently, I think a brand like Bulgari, just going through its pages, going through its history, makes you smile, makes you believe in life again. It gives you optimism. Um, at that same time, I had the pleasure of interviewing Lucia and interacting with the team and the other mystical and magical thing that everybody in Bulgari has and they share with India is that they believe stones have energy and they talk to you. But before I ask Lucia to say anything, I know that they've put together a very beautiful film for all of us to see so that you can see some of what I had the privilege of seeing, but I can assure you that it's never enough. I've spent the last two weeks since this opportunity going through your magical imagery and I cannot tell you what a privilege this is to talk to both of you and to be here with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank much. you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, I guess more ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Even though jewels are not merely for ladies, especially in India, um, appreciate to buy brands for, for the ladies. So in our career, we could see men enjoy uh, jewels, sometimes more, uh, I mean, husband more than, than wives. So it's a, it's a worldwide uh, connection with the jewelry and the jewelry. But 
to uh, introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to the, the sacred flow, the magic path that uh, will lead us uh, to start by something uh, like this small gem into a magnificent uh, piece of art. Lucia and I would like to introduce you to this uh, journey through a, a short video, a quite emotional video, um, that will uh, allow you to recognize uh, some, uh, I think, some landscapes. Because we would like to underline how we love India. It's not just because you are here, but because we really love India from the beginning. From the beginning, when I started to work in India, my first trip was in India, it was in Jaipur, and I enjoyed it so much with Mr. Bulgari that he loves India too. So uh, this is not only uh, an opportunity, it's something that we would like to, to share with you. But in the meantime, I can, I can show you some beautiful gems because the table today is very rich. It's very rich, and you can see here just an example how I start to work around the gems. So mainly we have two processes to create our jewel. One process when one, when we work with color gem, gems, we start from the gems and then we get, uh, we get inspiration from the gems and then we work around the gems like this. When, when I'm ready with the, the combination of colors, with the proportion, with the harmony of the, uh, the sizes, uh, and I call the designer, and I have to say that it's a teamwork. So we work together, and we study a link between the gems. So this is one, one process. When we work with diamond, we work in, in the opposite way. So we work thinking of an idea, a suggestion, an inspiration, and then we buy the diamond. But with color gems, we must to start from the gems. And uh, allow me to make a little bit of room on the table, darling, because I know that you have uh, a little uh, yes. show to do now. Because I like to start my morning uh, taking uh, positive vibes and energy from a uh, fancy color of fire, for instance. Can you see it? Yes, I, I hope so. Can you see the table? Yeah. Can you see the four the waterfall of fancy colors, sapphires uh, Lucia is working with? Hundreds of different shades, a lot of different shapes. Um, and the king, the king of the, the necklace, which is going to be a splendid Colombian emerald, quite intense, highly saturated. Uh, oh, sorry to interrupt. Right. Uh, sorry to interrupt in between Jim Paolo and Lucia. Uh, members are not able to uh, hear you properly, so you have to be slightly louder. Uh, so you can't. You can see. You can uh, uh, watch the. the uh, it is visible, but uh, the voice is not audible clearly. Oh. May I make a suggestion? I think we're absolutely fine. Let's put the spotlight back on the beautiful jewelry. Lucia, it would be wonderful for you to talk to us about which gemstones make it to a Bulgari cut, a little bit about the DNA of the brand and what is high jewelry. Each one of us treats every piece of jewelry as valuable, but high jewelry has a very special DNA, and that is the story of the brand. High jewelry is a, is a art, a good, pure art. As in, when, when we create a, a necklace, a bracelet, a ring, we create a piece of art, of course. And uh, we like to think about uh, our jewels uh, like something that uh, we, we can have for forever. 
and uh, our pieces are not only uh, contemporary but timeless. And we like to underline that uh, uh, I can wear uh, from my grandmother uh, wonderful pieces, and you can see at the auction how many Bulgari high jewelry pieces uh, you can find a very incredible price also. So high jewelry uh, for me, for Bulgari, is uh, art, but also uh, beauty, of course. Beauty in, in terms of uh, gems, colors, and craftsmanship. And uh, in terms of colors, um, one of the first, first things that I learned from Mr. Bulgari, it was uh, uh, don't be shy and mix colors together and uh, be daring to use a different kind of gems, a different kind of cuts, uh, sizes, but with a great army. Don't forget this word, army. I don't so know if you, can, if you can appreciate uh, this uh, super large gem, which is not only quite high in the current weight, but it features the secret of uh, the Bulgari expertise in selecting gems. First of all, the color. Look at the color, it's very um, even, it's very intense, yet not too dark. The brightness, the sparkle. Uh, what about the proportions? You know, generally, uh, <laughs> especially Indian captors, uh, it's always a quite hard negotiation, right, Lucia, to ask them for um, managing the shape of the gems, the proportion, following our standard, never to give gems, because uh, gems have to lie on our skin, right? We need to feel their power, their vice, the four, Two step pavilions are going to keep the gem uh, distant from us. So our gems are always open, very feminine, very generous. They feature a much higher kind of weight at the end. <laughs> I have to say that I learned a lot from the Indian cutters. The tradition for cutting gems is so, so antique that uh, I learned, about, uh, especially at the beginning of my my journey in Bulgari, I learned a lot of things about the cutting of gems. But now we work together. We work together with the cutters, especially Indian cutters, and because uh, we would like to give to our gems, Bulgari gems, uh, something different from the others. So we like to call uh, some gems Bulgari cuts. Because Giampaolo just told, uh, told us how beautiful can be a Bulgari cut that is very elegant, not heavy, very proportional, very sophisticated. And uh, for instance, we have a spinel, 21 carat, red spinel. And uh, when I saw the, this spinel the first time, uh, it was uh, uh, 25 carat, but uh, we decided uh, don't buy it because it was too heavy. The pavilion was too 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 yeah, big. Too big. And so uh, I received this spinel after two years. I received this the same spinel when uh, the cutters decided to recut with our suggestion. So he, we lost. Uh, he lost the uh, four carats more or less. But now the stone is the stone that. Can talk and uh, I, I I say that I talk with the gems. So when I saw the gem, I just say uh, good morning, buongiorno, because it's a really Bulgari gem. And you see from the surface, you can appreciate uh, how the gem on the table uh, has a sort of a little dome, mm -hmm. so it's not flat at all. But it's uh, sort of a Bombay. Why? Because uh, we wanted to give to the gem the effect of a drop of water on the table to warm up the transparency and to create an effect of uh, liquidity, fluidity. So these are 
super small kind of details which make for us a huge difference because every time, I mean, every time our gemologists travel the world, the approach, of course, to select and choose uh, the gems is always the same. So quality in terms of color, intensity, brightness, mm, uh, of course, the cut, the size, but in order to uh, be out of the foyer and to infuse our vulgarity to the gem, we need to look for little details. And the details are these, the proportion, the way we can give the final touch, the harmonization. When Lucia shows you something like this, how can you think about having some kunzite with para blended with paraiba turmeric, with rubellite, eventually with emeralds? I mean, at the first glance, you think, oh my gosh, too many things together. Instead, not at all. When you look at the thing, the harmony is there, right? Exactly. And what I just add that we call this kind of jazz with this kind of taste gems with personality. It's very important for us to, to work with the personality of the gem. That means there something there is in the color, in the cut, in the, in the harmonization with the with the other gems. Um, I don't know if you already saw the cascade of the sapphire, but because I, I can uh, I can do it again. Um on a I'd like to show you a, a gray sugar rock sapphire. Can you guess how many carats? Uh, 130 something carats. 115. <laughs> Matt's very, very, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. I'm, I'm cheating because I've seen this, but um, it's really exceptional to know um, that a Bulgari gem actually stands, other than all the qualities that a jeweler looks for, but for harmony, for color, for play, um, also for some sort of natural affinity with nature, because you talk about a dome, you talk about a girl. What really sort of makes a Bulgari creation? Because you have some iconic um, lines that have stood the test of time. You know, um, the serpenti, it's seen so many variations from stiff, to sinewy, uh, we were talking about how the, the snake is a symbol of rebirth in your mythology as well as in India. You have so many collections and lines. So what makes a Bulgari creation? How does it stand the test of time? And how do the iterations give a very, very historical brand such a modern touch? Um. Okay. Now, we are definitely going to uh, unveil a little bit of the, the process through this uh, little video, and then we will talk about uh, uh, the output. So, the, um, let's say the flow that uh, we need us uh, to, give, to, to bring to birth uh, such a strong kind of symbol.
So the journey uh, is uh, quite long one. Uh, quite often, uh, it takes more than four months, five months, up to more than two years, uh, from the gem scouting uh, down to the final, uh, I mean, the delivery of the final tour. We were talking about uh, some symbol. Actually, our word of uh, inspiration is quite magnificent. We are lucky, as you guys, because we live in a super city, which is a source, it's a continued source of inspiration. So the bond uh, with the city, with Rome, its architecture, its uh, art, the fact that which is a museum uh, in, uh, under the sky, in open air, is uh, very much uh, uh, giving us uh, um, inspiration. Um, it's an inspiration which finds its root into the Mediterranean uh, basin, into its myths, uh, into its legend, uh, into hundreds, if not thousands of years. Uh, for example, the snake, the serpent, which is uh, for us uh, not a mere way to transform uh, the design of a specific serpent into a tool. Not at all. That is not our approach. Our approach is to breathe, uh, to be nourished uh, by the legend, by the, the uh, symbol that that uh, specific sign uh, can give us. So, for instance, the serpent, since uh, ages, was uh, the symbol of protection, uh, the symbol of uh, rejuvenation. You know, the serpent changed the skin uh, twice a year, then so it's a symbol of eternal life. Seduction. Seduction through the eyes, especially in India, uh, when you have the flutes, the, the guys uh, playing with the, the snakes, the cobras. Our snakes, therefore, are not viper or cobras, not at all, are simply the symbol of uh, the seductive femininity the symbol of uh, those uh, women uh, with a certain uh, energy. But confident and, and of course, elegant and uh, we uh, uh, we started, the women started with serpents in uh, doing the forums. Um, but we, as John said, said uh, uh, and serpent is a symbol that is a, is a metamorphosis and like serpent, we change our collection, our serpent in different ways. So we now under the umbrella of our serpent collection, we have a different kind of uh, serpent. Uh, always very feminine, very positive, very strong, bold, but also uh, younger. Uh, we have a new collection for this uh, just uh, uh, launched. Viper collection and uh, it's very, very new and very for young generation. So uh, we would like to, to catch the young generation. And uh, with the Viper collection, I don't know if you can see my bracelets and my ring. This comes from uh, Not only hygiene, I mean. <laughs> So here you can see that uh, the common thread yes. throughout uh, the decades uh, uh, is uh, a symbol of seduction, uh, power, protection. But we like to rejuvenate this design um, time by time. So when we started, uh, was simply a, a sort of a coiled uh, serpent around the wrist which is uh, the one uh, uh, our friend Liz loved so much and made very, becoming very popular. We started uh, with bracelets, actually. And uh, the necklaces became uh, much later, but when, when we started... We, we started with the bracelet and the watches uh, in, uh, let's say, the uh, mid-40s. Yeah. Uh, then necklaces started around the mid-50s, so 10 years later mainly using uh, enamels 
to add color. But now we want to dare even more, and instead of using enamels, which allows to shape the gems yes. to fit the design, which is even more. Yes, our challenge today is we don't want to use enamel, but we want to use a hard stone. That is much, much more complicated, but the value is much more value. So we would like to continue in this line and to, to try to have a new combination of colors with the hard stones. Mixing with the precious stones, also. so we like to play, uh, as Mr. Bude says, uh, don't be shy and uh, dare with colors and shapes and uh, with the proportion. Always be that. And we layering, so yeah. the versatility of these jewels. So you can wear two uh, seventy watches uh, together. Mm -hmm. Or you can have uh, this necklace, Rachel Waist is uh, wearing, uh, endorsed twice around the neck, as she's doing, or just long on the front, or very long on the back shoulders, or even as a tiara on, uh, on the head. So this kind of way to play with the jewels is very much, as Nanita mentioned at the beginning, uh, um, the... Uh, the, the, the Bulgari brand is uh, all about uh, the way you can play, you can uh, have fun while uh, endorsing a jewel. Making the jewel exactly as you want. Well, a very well, famous uh, fashion editor, Diana Ruland of Harper's Bazaar, I think used to wear the belt as a necklace. It was a very favorite thing of hers to do. But when you put up that beautiful picture of Elizabeth Taylor, I'm reminded of a story. Apparently, the only Italian she could speak was the word Bulgari. Um, of course, yes. you know, it was not spaghetti because you saw her waist, right? So she was clearly yeah. not having any carbs. Um, but, you know, when I think of Elizabeth Taylor and I think of the jewelry she collected, there was something very canny and smart about her as well. She knew that high jewelry was an investment and it was an investment like the stock market, like art, like a lot of things that people consider traditional investment. And Giampaolo, we talked about this and I was wondering if you could take our very smart business women of Yflow through some of the advantages um, and the practical aspects of investing in jewelry. Because in India, it's emotional. We think we're investing, but we're not. We're buying it for keeps. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, um, high-end jewelry, in my opinion, uh, is uh, a sort of a, you know, uh, wearable investment. So if you look at this picture, starting uh, by uh, this sale, right? The incredible uh, emeralds that uh, uh, she was uh, offered as a gift, but she completed the set by uh, purchasing the bracelet and the earrings. So um, these jewels uh, are jewels with uh, a specific meaning of investment yeah. Yeah. Due, due to uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, characteristics. Uh, the different characteristics. A jewel is composed by uh, elements which are undoubtedly valuable. So the gems, of course, the metal structure, so the gold or the platinum, plus the craftsmanship, which is going to add the, the artistic dimension, and the signature. This is what all the investors are looking for, these four main characteristics. So, to um, give uh, a dimension of investment to a jewel, first of all, the materials uh, have to be rare. So, rare, rare gems, the finest gems uh, from all over the world, rubies, emeralds, sapphires, uh, but also spinels, as we have seen or uh, paraiba permanents, some new gems which have in common the rarity. Rarity means prices increasing cost. Then the uh, 
the other valuable thing of uh, an investment jewel is uh, the transferability. So if you need to uh, invest on something, uh, a lot of uh, money on just a little thing that you can uh, put in your pocket, definitely what you can do is uh, to buy a, a Paraiba Germany like this one here, she has, or a, a gorgeous... Uh, oh, right. yeah, I can't see. Like this one here. And the four, you see, in a little room, you can uh, uh, put a lot of uh, money. Another component to increase the value, increase the value of uh, uh, the jewel uh, and the four uh, giving a, 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 an angle of investment is that the jewel is durable. Metals and gems are hard, are durable. They can survive uh, the next future generation. So those jewels can be handed down uh, from uh, generation to generation. Another uh, before the first characteristic that uh, is uh, giving a lot of favor uh, into the crowd of investors uh, is uh, the portability, the wearability, and the fact that these kind of jewels, uh, such as the one you can see now, uh, increase their value constantly. So if you have all these characteristics, the rarity of the gem and, and the quality, of course, the, the design, a significant design, a one-of-a-kind design, uh, the signature of the brand, uh, all these things uh, will uh, make jewels such as this necklace, which uh, was uh, um, put on auction uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, reaching uh, 28 million, uh, uh, even more, uh, US dollars, or uh, such as the vivid pink uh, uh, diamond ring. Um, uh, weighing less than 20 carats, uh, which reached the price of 52 million US dollars. So definitely those uh, uh, jewels can definitely be considered a, a form of investment. And Lucia and I are very uh, proud of sharing uh, also some other pictures, uh, La Prossima, where you can see uh, you can see, uh, for instance, here um, some results of uh, past auctions where you have, for instance, uh, the half estimate of the first emerald necklace, which was uh, around half a million and which reached more than the double. Same for all the other jewels even better for the ruby ring, which create uh, a new record broke a new record in the world of uh, uh, the auctions, uh, uh, reaching five times uh, the upper estimate. So not only the gems, of course, uh, but also the frame, so the artistic value of a jewel. The jewel is one of a kind. Look at the 70 watches down there. Uh, or the iconic uh, uh, creative necklaces. We only have one in the whole universe. And of course, as soon as one of those duels uh, come up to the auction trade, their value will grow extremely fast. A few years ago, let's say down to year 2000, you could uh, collect uh, a, a 70 uh, bangle, a 70 watch, for 60,000 or 70,000 euro. Now, you see the price uh, in London in 2014, that very serpenti watch reached more than 1 million uh, US dollars. It's important to say that, uh, yeah, we, we say that it's a piece of art, but also an investment, yes. Uh, because uh, the gems became rare and rare, much more rare than when I, when I started to work 40 years ago. Uh, I could buy some gems, some rubies, or some emeralds that now it's impossible to find. 
So it's a bit, and I regret sometimes for myself that I didn't buy uh, some gems, but now it's impossible to find. So we have to think that uh, gems are a gift from the nature. And why we call our our jewels uh, is about because that is a mixture between a gift from uh, the nature and the human being. So craftsmanship and nature. So it's a unique inside. Uh, in the art, it's a something that is new. Thank you. That was really Thank you. That was really What touches my heart, other than the fact that yes, it's a gift from nature and it's a unique piece. Is that it actually is there in, where enjoy? You know, you can't walk around holding a piece, a, a painting. You can't clutch your stocks to your heart. But this piece of jewelry you can wear, and it changes with the character of your life and your experiences. It becomes more personal and more valuable. Um, while we were having this conversation, I was also watching Lucia play with gemstones like they're her babies. Um, this has been an incredibly illuminating conversation, but I have a special little secret that Lucia has agreed to share with you. Um, she is completely in love with India. She's wearing a very beautiful outfit. She made me up my game, um, but she's also going to share with you a private video of hers from her time in India, which she showed us and had dancing. She started the uh, conversation with this, but look at that piece. Just look at the fun she's having already. But Lucia, you promised that you were going to share that lovely video with us. And I think we can all see it. And you know what? Dance a little, guys. The music is fabulous. And by the way, the editor of the video is also Lucia. <laughs> Definitely. Jewelry and video. She's very popular. Absolutely. Yes. The planets, uh, the planets, all juicy kind of uh, gems. And be ready to dance, ladies. How did you like the video, ladies? Thank you. I like I say, Thank I you. I than most of us Indian girls. Uh, and you wear your clothes beautifully. That that was a beautiful session. Um, I know we had some technical issues, but you know that's the beauty of the way we're all communicating with each other. You're coming into our homes and our studios, so if things are not perfect, that's life. So, I mean, I'm so glad that we've been able to be human and feel the intimacy of the stones and share both Giampaolo and Lucia's passion for what they do. Um, I want to thank Bulgari and um, the Fiki Waiflo, extraordinary young women for this opportunity. Um, Apurva, Apurva is going to take over because I know she has many questions and it's only right that she asks them all. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Nanita. Thank you, Nanita. May I now request uh, to uh, for Shafali to take over? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I can see you though. Buongiorno. 
So my question to you is, so the new collection, Barocco, if I'm not wrong, that's how it's pronounced. Barocco. Has a, Barocco. Has a big reflection of classic Indian designs and color gemstones reflecting of Jaipur. Please tell us about the inspiration behind it. So Morocco, uh, every collection, every hour collection, there is a, there is a, a, a touch of uh, Jaipur, a touch of India in every collection. So for us, when, when you think about it, the colors of the gems, the combination, there is always a touch of uh, Jaipur, especially of Jaipur that is in my, in my heart. In the pink city, right. Uh, in this case, in Morocco, of course, uh, gems before and then, uh, before and then uh, Rome is a very important source of inspiration. Of course, uh, as John Paolo said, uh, Rome is, is a museum, uh, open air, and so we, we can have uh, inspiration everywhere. And personally, I walked around the city uh, early morning, uh, every day and I took so, so many videos and pictures and I share my, my suggestions, my, my ideas with my team and with Giancarlo and we, we decided to create this collection for the Barocco. So Barocco has been an uh, art movement uh, very much innovative. Uh, at the end of the 1600s, beginning of 1600s, uh, definitely Rome became uh, once again the belly of uh, the antique universe, let's say, uh, in the Mediterranean basin. So a lot of artists used to come to Rome to make a new Rome, to craft, to design, and to ideate it and build it a totally new, innovative Rome. Breaking all the rules uh, of the past, making possible the impossible. And in fact, it, it can, be, can be called a, a rock moment. Mm -hmm. Because in fact, in our uh, Barocco collection, we wrote with a K because uh, there is something rock inside of the collection. That's great. So Thank that, you so much, Lucia. Being and, not reverent toward the past time, so what the city can teach us but also being innovative, giving always uh, a dimension, uh, a futuristic kind of dimension, but still uh, taking in mind uh, the genius uh, of our Roman uh, origin, how much the genius, the innov innovative process uh, inspired our ancestors. You, you can see in the uh, neck, uh, on my neck, uh, the, the, the yeah. necklace, Called the uh, constellation, and with the, the, I bought the stones in Jaipur and are uh, Castellanis and uh, pink rubellite. So, your necklace it surely, it, it surely, your necklace surely shows Jaipur, and I can relate to your love to Jaipur because I am a Jaipur girl. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Pleasure. May I request Smita Kuda to ask the next question, please? Hello, Lucia. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. So I would like to ask you, what is your favorite gemstone to work, that you work around with? Because you spoke about energy and you know uh, the vibe that it gives you. So apart from diamond, what is the favorite gemstone, colored gem that you like to work with? Well, this is a very difficult question because I love all the gems. But if I have to say what, what is my first love, it's sapphire. Sapphire because I started to work with sapphires when I started working in Bulgari. And I didn't know that a sapphire can be blue, can be pink, can be red, can be know, green. Uh, yellow. So I played with the color. So my first love is a fire, but I love all the gems, of course. The energy is so strong. We work together with all the gems, make me happy. And Lucia um, didn't tell you a secret that I'm going to share, darling, which is uh, she was born with uh, 
the Bombay brothers, right? Uh, they used to work with a very young uh, girl and uh, they opened uh, their heart to her, uh, sharing uh, a passion their father had on blue gems, on sapphires. Because uh, uh, George Bombay, Mr. Paolo's and Nicola's father, uh, used to tell to Lucia, my favorite gems are sapphires because it's the family you can have the widest uh, shades of colors and the widest shades of blue, from yeah. the light blue from Sri Lanka down to the very uh, precious uh, Kashmir blue, cornflower blue, um, re reminding them the beautiful shades of the Mediterranean ocean around the Greek island. So they felt, you know, that Sophia and the family came from Greece. So they felt a little bit a bond with this gem being uh, uh, reminding them the beautiful colors of nature in Greece. Well, that was my first discovery. I discovered some colors, but then when I, I discovered the other jazz, I felt immediately in love. I shared the passion with them, with John Paul. So I knew that you can feel the love of Thank you. Thank you for your insights. And I have Aarti Shah to ask her next question, please. Hi, Lucia. Uh, my question to you is, do you have any favorite or a most memorable jewelry from your recent years? Um, uh, it's a difficult question too, but anyway, anyway uh, we shared with, just before the meeting with Giancarlo uh, an actress that we love so much because it was so difficult to, to create, to mix the colors. And uh, I insist with every, every, everybody to do this method because there are so many colors, but at the end, the harmony and the energy, uh, the craftsmanship is so strong that it's, uh, for me, it's one of the best pieces in the Baroque collection. And we call the Peacock Necklace. I hope that Giampaolo can share yes. this. Uh, yeah. Um, this one. Tanzanite. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Super. Uh, that I bought in in, in uh, uh, Crypto Prado, um, emeralds, turquoise, amethyst, and turmeric. So there are many colors together, but you can see how beautiful are the harmonic. Is a, is a combination. This is a secret, ladies. Uh, this is a gift, more than a secret, uh, to have uh, many colors, uh, but composed in a very harmonious way. This is uh, something that at Bulgari, I mean, she has read since ever, and uh, she has this gift now transmitted to the future generation. And this is, in my opinion, uh, the strongest point uh, at the base of our colorful jewels. And we call it this kind of necklace is a happy necklace. Thank you. I would now invite you now and I with DJ to ask a question. Thank you, Lucia, for sharing the lovely insight on designing and your favorite piece as well. Do you have any suggestion and tips for the first time buyers looking to buy a piece of jewelry at Bulgari? Um, the first buying, uh, why not at the fancy necklace? The fancy necklace is, a, is a, our legendary icon. So uh, you can have a the fancy, beautiful the fancy necklace. Uh, full of diamonds or just a touch of the, uh, the head of the fancy or bracelet. I love the last collection called the uh, Viper Collection from the fancy. And for me, if you have to start with uh, a good idea, uh, why not the fancy? 
I have to say, ladies, uh, your questions are quite tricky because for the mom, the mother of all these jewels is difficult. But maybe, maybe the, the main uh, um, advice we can uh, give to you ladies uh, to collect uh, a Buddha jewel for the first time is first of all uh, to fall in love. So to look at uh, the collection, the jewels, and never, never take uh, give your opinion, uh, uh, bring up to your mind uh, a, an idea without touching and feeling. Because those jewels are being conceived to be endorsed, not to lie into the safe, but to be worn. So the suppleness, the tactile quality, the good vibes and energy she mentioned at the beginning uh, about the gems, all those things uh, are very subtle and you can't detect those subtle things just looking at uh, a window, a showcase. So our advice is, first of all, fall in love for the design you like the most and then touch and try before taking your decision. Enjoy and play with the collection. I like to, to wear the fancy with the monete or uh, with color gems. So Play with jewels, and I think in your tradition, I learned a lot from your tradition because you, you, you wear a lot of jewels. So, uh, for Burgay and for a typical Burgay woman, is a uh, uh, used to uh, mix colors and mix the uh, collection together. Play and don't be shy, enjoy. Thank you, thank you. Next, I would like to invite, invite Pallavi Jain for a question, please. Lucia and Jampalo, thank you so much for the illuminating session today. I would like to ask, uh, considering the post-pandemic situation, as we're not able to go out so much physically anymore, what kind of designs do you think will be trending for the next upcoming times? Uh, which kind of design? Yes. I mean, if you could predict the... So we, we will see because... Uh... It's a very new situation for uh, all of us. Exactly. Uh, but it's very, very new. So we continue to enjoy the beat. For, for us, it's important to share the beat. So it can be very slim uh, necklace, very fine, very, uh, very little uh, detail, or a gorgeous necklace. So, so we will see. But we want to enjoy the beauty uh, uh, forever. And so it's very important to enjoy our month, month. Yes, yes, definitely. Because in this, uh, let's say, grayish time, even though we can start yeah. looking at some shine, yeah. some shine, some yes. Shine, yes. But uh, uh, definitely, a jewel is uh, a matter of emotion, it's a matter of uh, joy, and it's a matter of positivity. Before, definitely the, the, the achievement uh, uh, and the goal we have is uh, to infuse uh, new designs with these good vibes uh, and positive energy. So meaning, uh, um, first of all, keeping an eye on investment, especially for the one of the kind, the rare things, but also, uh, and even, uh, uh, the utmost uh, importance of the utmost importance is uh, to bring uh, uh, positiveness, bringing uh, a ray of light uh, to the grayish life uh, we have nowadays. Thank you. I think that your pieces have today really sparkled the session. Thank you. Can I have Priyanka Agarwal to ask the next question, please? Can we have spotlight on Priyanka? Yes. Thank you for such a beautiful session, Lucia and Jayampulu. So my question is, how are your manufacturing process structured? Arami, can you repeat, please? How are your manufacturing process structured? Oh, definitely. Uh, we take a lot of care of uh, how to make possible the impossible, such as uh, this gorgeous uh, 
ruby splendor, uh, which is uh, bold, but at the same time uh, so light, despite it's made of platinum, and platinum is quite heavy and stiff. It's so light and flexible. It's a sort of a lace. How to make a jewel which is made of uh, metal and gems, so hard material, as light and uh, supple and flexible as a lace. This is uh, thanks uh, to a splendid cooperation our designers have with the gold pieces. We have a team of internal designers who had uh, the chance to spend at least a couple of years set next to the gold mint. Why? Because while making the sketch, they have to forecast, they have to understand how that two-dimensional design will become a three-dimensional tool. Before, as soon as the design starts working around uh, the splendid uh, first Lucia uh, design, I mean, put on place, so starting by the gem. As soon as uh, the designer will uh, make uh, uh, their sketch around uh, these gems, they will think about how the gold meat will craft all the bezels, all the settings, all the little links, all the images. So being very close to them while explaining the design to them. And they will uh, uh, count on the long term of experience. Our, design, our goldsmiths have minimum 20 to 25 years uh, of experience uh, working with us. We do have an atelier here in Rome where Lucia goes uh, daily. Yeah, personally, like. I, I, I go there every, every day and after this meeting, I'm going there to check the, the new collection. Exactly. And uh, maybe uh, you will follow Lucia and you will see on Instagram some stories uh, around the atelier. So this is the topic. Both uh, um, goldsmiths are super expert on our technicality. And they are, on top of that, very well trained by other technicians from up north, from Valenza, where we do have a, a huge plant uh, with more than 600 goldsmiths, um, who are instead less, let's say, capable uh, using their hands, but much higher skilled on technicality. So using tools, machines, to um, create, to make possible the impossible, such as a laser machine, a CAD CAM, uh, working uh, progress. So all those uh, technicality blended with the experience and the expertise of our designer in Goldsmiths, after six, seven, uh, eight, ten months of work, will give us to birth uh, this uh, uh, jewel, which is a pleasure to wear, right? Absolutely, and uh, it's, uh, the craftsmanship is amazing, and the uh, are amazing. And uh, it's very difficult to find. They are a modern mix with modern mix with it, uh, and small layout here, and a big uh, modern mix with 10 carats, and it's a perfect cut, and we recut the movie here in the uh, we said before, we like to have a beautiful cast, not too heavy, very light and white, so you can see the fire inside of the room. Thank you. I would like to invite Bhavya Rebella to ask her next question, please. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, Lucia. So I'd like to know how would you describe the Bulgari high-end jewelry customer? How would you describe a customer? Um, we are an international company, so there are so many kinds of uh, ladies that can wear Bulgari. 
in my mind, I, I can see, I can imagine a self-confident woman, um, but uh, uh, with a touch of uh, uh, romantic. Uh, romanticism. Uh, romanticism, but feminine, uh, uh, business woman, so a very eclectic woman, and uh, that is not shy and uh, like to to wear something that they can uh, can enjoy and can uh, express herself with uh, in different uh, with colors and with uh, the different kind of uh, jewels all together. So a very self-confident woman, but at the same time, very fast. That's amazing. Thank you. Welcome. That was indeed a very informative session of questions and answers. I would now invite Deepthi, Viflo Vice Chairperson, to give a vote of thanks. Hi, namaste, good evening. It was so nice to see both of you show your exquisite, your exquisite jewelry. It was just out of the world. Thank you so much. Wow, what an amazing collection. It was truly an awe to our eyes. So Bulgari was my favorite and I've been an admirer of your jewelry since childhood. And Serpentine is always my favorite. I love the watch, I have it now. <laughs> so thank you, Jean Paolo and Lucia Silvestri for being here and making this day so special for us. And we've got to know so much about your jewelry and we're overwhelmed to have you here with us today. Thank you. And you've Thank presented, you. namaste, you've presented the best and your iconic jewelry and Bulgari is one of our favorite brands from Italy. <laughs> Thank you. And, oh <laughs> and looking what? forward to seeing you both in India display your jewelry and we're all going to come and shop and enjoy the collection. Yeah, we don't know how we miss India. We miss so much India. So we hope to come, to come to you very soon. Yes, yes, yes. But in the meanwhile, um, while waiting uh, for a meeting uh, in person, uh, just to tell you that if you want to give a kind of uh, jewelry experience, uh, a real high-end jewelry experience, uh, trying on the jewels, uh, uh, looking at the, the color, listening to the fancy stories behind those uh, uh, jewels, uh, please uh, uh, just to share with you that in the forthcoming days, uh, in Delhi and in Mumbai, there will be a high-end jewelry experience uh, hosted by our uh, colleagues uh, in uh, Delhi and Mumbai, these are the dates, 14th and 15th of March uh, in Delhi, and uh, 19th and 20th of March in Mumbai, with the uh, telephone numbers uh, to book your experience. Uh, with, Looking uh, forward to it. We will all come and see you there. Lovely. <laughs> Have a lot of fun, ladies. Thank you. thank you so much. On this note, I would like to thank uh, both of you for being here and making this day so special for us. And I would like to thank Nonita Carla for being here as our moderator. And I would like to thank our team who's done a splendid job to bring you guys here and make this day so special for us. And our IT team to put in this beautiful show across. And thank you all for being here. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. I would like, I would now like to invite Aman, India Commercial Manager, Bulgari, to say a vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, on behalf of all of us at Bulgari, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to all of you for, be, for joining us in this journey to discover the magnificence of Bulgari. We truly appreciate your time and uh, engagement and very much hope to meet with you with each of you in person, um, whether at our trunk shows or, um, you know, at our stores or anywhere else. Uh, thank you very much and have a lovely evening. And thank you very much. And a special thanks to YFLO uh, for having us here. And of course, um, to Nonita for hosting, um, for moderating such an insightful and rich interaction. Thank you, Aman. 
I thank our guests, Ms. Lucia, Ms. Rampalo, Ms. Nonita, past chairs, flow committee, chapter chairs, and members for their participation. We indeed look forward to inspire you all with more power packed events. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Apurva.